Today we're going to look at PowerShell workflows and before I do there's a lovely one uh, script that I found by Jamie Thompson so a big shout out to him for creating this. Uh, it's a good example of parallelism versus serialism in workflows. So if I just go ahead and run the default example that he's got here what you'll see is it runs a default count of 50 instances going off to the BBC website simply retrieving the website and the time it takes for that to be done by invoke web so the first run in the workflow is the in serialism which is what you can see at the moment was it goes through each instance one at a time and then it does another run in parallelism and also then does a comparison. Now obviously parallelism is faster than serialism in this example but it also shows one other useful little bit um, and the kind of the purpose of this video. Once the parallelism starts you'll see that you kind of see this part where there's about no more than four or five threads at a time and you start asking yourself the question well hey isn't it supposed to be in parallel and therefore lots of them running at the same time but here I can see five um, the answer to that is, yeah, that, that's the case. And we're going to show you that, one, that's not a bad thing, and two, why that is happening in this particular example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a new window, running effectively the, the same script, but with a few minor tweaks. So the difference between the example script and what I'm about to run is that no longer will I be running it the function so we're now going to run the for each invoke directly and what you're going to see here is a very different way of it responding because as you can see it says starting and it just continues to say starting and starting all the way through the numbering and it will actually start all of those instances simultaneously now this is where we hit the issue of whilst that sounds good in principle it actually can generate a little bit of a bottleneck and as a result you end up with many instances all trying to do the same thing at once now the reason I say this and keep it in mind is if we look at the total runtime of our previous one for serial we got 17 seconds for parallel we got 8 now if you do a quick count from when I started talking about this second script or the modification to the existing one uh, that was already more than eight seconds ago so we know it's not going to be faster than that and we're looking at will it be faster than serialism still well the answer is no it's not now if we look at the end bit on this and you're about to see the total time spent when it gets to the end it's 67 seconds that's slower than both put together so let's ask ourselves the question what happened here well, when we removed the function, the function was generating a self-imposed limit of about five sessions each time. So when we removed that, we were able to run as many as we specified, in this case 50. Now, you would think that that would be faster, but in this case, each session was basically blocking the other one, and the result was that they were running slower. Um, you can do this yourself and do a couple of tests and find that, as an example, there's this kind of... Um, good versus bad, best performance versus slowing down, depending on the number of threads, the amount of RAM, and what kind of resource. So in this case, since they're all network requests, uh, it's a high probability that the network was what suddenly became a bottleneck, and each thread was slowed down, and the cumulatively together, they ended up being more than the total of the serial and the parallelism together from the previous run. So what did we learn? What we learned is it's a good idea not to underestimate where bottlenecks are. However, parallelism is still faster than serialism, but you might need to understand how it's working on your particular task. Now, if you like this video or other ones we've done, please hit the subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.